but the issue is we're now living longer. Yeah. We are living much, much longer than, you know, what was humanly possible. What healthy is for you is changeable and it's different for different people, for different stages of life, for different goals. And it has to have that kind of malleability. It isn't like mm. an end goal tick box. Or maybe you're popping all the magnesium in the world, but you don't have enough sodium and potassium to balance those levels. Oh, yeah. And then you still don't feel good. <laughs> You know what frustrates me? Me. Well, other than you. I mean, obviously <laughs> you. <laughs> it's like dilly, then this. Um, I feel like in the health and wellness industry, we focus so much on diet as like this the equation or the answer to eternal health and I just feel like yes diet is an element but it's like a small piece in a massive puzzle and it really frustrates me when we I kind of see all of this content and, you know, all these people talking about like, what's the best diet? You know, do you need to cut this? Do you need to increase this? Do you need to change this? And like, they're focusing so much on this one place, whereas actually the audience is often looking for, you know, a whole wellness solution. And we get frustrated because if we can't get that diet perfectly right, we feel like, oh, well, there's no point in supporting my health or wellness at all. And I don't know. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Like, what do you think about diet in relation to health? Like, is is diet the answer to health or is there more going on there? <laughs> it's like asking, um, is when when you run a car, is tires the only thing that you should be checking? Mm, mm -hmm. Is the tires anything that you should be fixing? Yeah, it's the same. It's it's like everything, like a person being a person who they are. There's so many things that add into the mix. Like, are you dealing with your stress? Yeah. Now, yeah. if you're if you're taking popping all of the magnesium in the world, because let's be honest, we frigging love magnesium. But if you're popping all the magnesium in the world, but you're still dealing with the stress. It ain't going to help you. Or maybe you're popping all the magnesium in the world, but you don't have enough sodium and potassium to balance those levels. Or you're, and then you still don't yeah. feel okay. Or you're smashing all the vitamin D, but you're not taking the magnesium yeah. supplement, the vitamin D. I just feel like I know, like, I know people don't want to hear the fact that it's nuanced, but like total overall health and well-being is nuanced like there's so many different factors and it's never you never reach this place of total well-being where every single thing is incredible mm. you know there's there's ebbs and flows and you can definitely I mean the way I see it I think you can grow and build your foundational health to a more and more solid place. Mm. And I think the more solid and well-rounded your foundational system of health is, mm. then the more resilient you become and the more tolerant you are to, you know, the things around you that may not be healthy. And so you can, you know, if you do indulge in something that's less healthy, like alcohol or you know sugar or you know you're around toxic people or um, you know you do some of those things that maybe are less healthy because you have a solid foundation you're more tolerant to that but I kind of feel like when we focus so much on diet we almost take permission away from people that may not be in the space to tackle their diet mm. to even you know, achieve a taste of wellness. Does that make sense? Yeah. In that, like, I, and this is coming from a nutritionist, like, I absolutely believe that diet is a foundational element of health. And it's not actually a belief. It's a knowing. It's a knowledge. Um, and so it can't be ignored. But I equally don't think that you have to have your diet in this perfect place before you can, you know, infiltrate the area of wellness and well-being mm. am i making any sense no you are because like you know the um 
Hippocrates saying that let food be thy medicine and let medicine mm, be by, mm-hmm. by food. If you look at that approach of looking at like health, diet would, you know, be a, a play playful structure, right? Yeah. But the issue is we're now living longer. Yeah. We are living much, much longer than, you know, what was humanly possible. And that's through us unlocking the genetic codes. That's understanding supplements. It's looking at optimizing medication. It's looking at like health and strength training. All of those different principles have a major factor into Mm. it. But we've got this kind of like ideology of just diet alone fixes everything Diet does fix a lot of things, but it's not the be all end all. Like mm-hmm. fasting, for example. You look at fasting, how many people have done incredibly well of fasting? You've got like the, the big craze that's kicking off now is the water fasting, where people are doing mm-hmm. like 40 days just on water alone. Mm-hmm. And so they're seeing massive shifts in their like blood pressure and like their joint health and their immune system. But these are all different aspects of fixing the goal of it but i think we edge on diet because it has a lot of function on it but if you you know i think like a lot of the the strength training in pts talk about 80 percent or 90 percent is diet 10 percent is training yeah that that is true but they're just looking at the diet and the strength and the fact that you're like you look your shape is good but if you're stressed off your tits absolutely like stressed to crazy I guarantee you the other health factors are kicking in. Yeah, 1000%. And also I think we need to change our language because we're assuming that diet equates to nutrition or nourishment. But as you and I both know, and we talk about all the time, you know, when Hippocrates was saying, let food be thy medicine, or when we were talking about, you know, something being 90% diet, That's assuming that our food system is still a nourished food system. That's assuming that the food we get on our plate still has all of the nutrients and antioxidants and things that we require. But we're not living in that place anymore. That's not the case anymore. And so I almost think we need to separate it. So again, not saying that diet doesn't matter. Diet absolutely matters particularly on those foundational basics because as I think we were saying in another in another video I think the Amazon effect one which we can link um, down below that you know nutrients work in as part of a wider system they don't work individually so you need and we still haven't discovered you know, every aspect of what kind of makes an isolated nutrient versus like a piece of food that has a mix of nutrients, polyphenols, um, different antioxidant compounds, things like that. We still don't know all the nuances of the difference between how those things work in the system. So I think it's really important that you have the foundational diet, um, even if, you know, you're the soil levels are depleted that you're still getting a mix of those healthy foods but I I think we're at that stage where we need to separate diet from nourishment because as we said food isn't necessarily meeting all of our nutritional requirements but then there's the other aspect that now because of the society and the world we're living in we have pollutants and chemicals and mold and mycotoxins that are assaulting our system and all of that assault in our system requires nutrients for our body to fight back and protect us so that drains our nutrients all of the medications that we're on which like most people I don't have the numbers on me but so many more people are on a cocktail of medications or even on a medication than we used to be in the past. The majority of people used to be on any pharmaceuticals. Now, the like I would say, a large, a large amount of people are on some form of pharmaceutical, even if it's just paracetamol or ibuprofen. Sometimes, those drain our nutrient stores. So, sir, like, look into your medications because sometimes they can cause you know significant deficiencies or drops in nutritional status. Stress causes massive drops or draws from our nutritional bank you know emotional dysregulation massive drop in our bank so there's all of these things that are taxing our nutrients Mm. our diet no longer is able to fulfill 
you know, all of our nutrient status for most people, it might still be possible in some situations. So I think we just need to separate these things out because I'm tired of people just like seeing these videos and reading these, you know, blogs and things where people are like oh just go back to your diet look at your diet change your diet and yes that's an important thing but one it's really effing hard I would say out of all of the different things you can do to support your well-being diet is one of the hardest changes (laughs) but also it's not providing all the nutrients you need so you could go through all of that hard work like do the hardest part of the well-being equation and still not feel any better well you probably would feel better because, again, I still think it's very important. Yeah. But you might not feel you might not actually reach whatever your goal is. And it just frustrates me because it makes people feel like they can't, you know, achieve health or achieve that feeling of wellness or get out of, you know, the rut that they're in unless they tick that box. Well, it's like everything you said there is like, it's facts facts are facts and that's it like even the adding to what you said about the supplementation what if you've got a leaky gut yeah you've got intestinal permeability which isn't because your gut's completely leaky stop saying like because it's called a leaky gut people think it means that your intestines are wide open Mm -mm. uh sorry to correct all the people that come out with this terminology of leaky gut you actually your gut's inflamed yeah your gut inflammation your gut because of that leakiness and your body's not able to absorb those nutrients into it yeah well that's another thing because like imagine if you actually are doing all of the hard work again of like choosing the right foods and da 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 but then your digestive system isn't able to break down and assimilate and absorb all of the nutrients that you actually require that sucks yeah and and see like that's why I think like diet has become such a big, big thing. I remember this like this uh, Facebook thing. I, I, I was I, I know this because I was guilty of signing up to it as well. It was like a, a, this this PT had created like an app where he built like um, the foods that you should eat seven days a week. So like oh, a diet okay. diet guide. And I think I was like maybe 23, 24 at the time. And I remember paying for this diet guide thing. Yeah. Actually, no. I filled the form in, got right to the bit of payment. I was like, nah, I'm broke, man. I ain't, pay- <laughs> I ain't paying for this. And um, but he was like, oh, do you eat, um, if you're vegetarian, do you eat corn? Do you eat tofu? And he was like building these like, you know, generic protocols. Mm. And he was coming at it from a generic approach. By the way, the the thingy completely flopped after a couple of years because people realised after a while it was just a massive yeah. wild con sort of thing. But you look at these images and videos of these people and you see them as healthy and it's only happening because they're doing loads of other changes. Like Mm -hmm. you talked about stress. Listen, if you are sat on your ass seven and a half hours a day, five days a week, absolutely like literally not moving you're gonna get unhealthy Mm. you are literally Mm. like even if you're eating like salad all the time oh 100 percent um we we were chatting to one of our logistics partners yesterday and they were like where their hub is they've got two things next to them an italian restaurant and a subway so if they're busy they have choices of two things that they can eat Mm. and i was just laughing they were like they're like we the half time we don't make lunch because they've got kids and stuff like that mm-hmm. he goes we don't have time for it and the, the, the guy was saying he was like i've gone from this size waist to this size waist and mm-hmm. we was like i started listening to your podcast and he goes and now i'm just like uh oh there are so many things that i need to do and it's by the way don't get overwhelmed mm-hmm. chill it takes time yeah. and if you listen to the amazon effect we talk about it it takes time but you need to yes look at your diet but look at other things that you're doing. Are you getting sunshine in the morning? Mm-hmm. When you wake up in the morning, are you looking at your phone or are you opening up your curtains or blinds or whatever it is and saying, you know, starting your date with natural light? Yeah, getting some light in your in your eyes, really, are really you, important. Are you hydrating? Are you getting your electrolytes in? Mm-hmm. Are you doing a few squats in the morning? Yeah, are you Ten. stimulating your muscles? Yeah. Are you breathing mm. properly? You know, you're breathing through your nose Easy. or breathing through your mouth. Girl, You're using your diaphragm. Oh my God, girl, this is such an important factor. Breathing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, are you breathing cor- correctly? Mm-hmm. Is your mouth closed and you're breathing through your nose throughout the day? Yeah. Yeah, are you Are you brushing your teeth? 
properly with the right nutrients in the mouth? Mm -hmm. Like, are you rebuilding the enamel? Because, by the way, everything starts in the mouth. Mm -hmm. We've learned that over time. Everything starts in the mouth. It's the first stage of digestion, but we don't really talk about it that way. Oh, of course. Why would we? Because we're so focused on the fact that why we're on constipation and why we're becoming constipated. Mm -hmm. Are you pooping every single day? Mm -hmm. Like, all these things are factors for being healthy yeah. or our perceived version of healthy and what your perceived version of healthy versus what someone else is is completely different mm. by the way like our we there's no agreement on what's considered healthy because for a pt healthy or not a pt but like someone in like the you know gym who's like in um, like a, what we would the, the society size is a, a muscle bro mm -hmm. could be like having a six-pack massive muscles that could be their version of healthy your version of healthy could be being an athlete that's running long distances and being super 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 lean mm -hmm. or it could be that you're in that remit of like um what they called the you know the people that do all the different training things where they swim triathletes oh triathlete yeah 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 like they could be like the they could be like oh we need to be like lean and this and that or maybe you're like trying to grow a business and so your version of healthy is to you know have support your brain health and have really good cognition and focus and boost energy <laughs> maybe your goal for being healthy is that you want to get pregnant and sustain a pregnancy and maybe you want to breastfeed and you want to be able to provide that nourishment for your child plus also healing your body i think like what healthy is for you is changeable and it's different for different people, for different stages of life, for different goals. And it has to have that kind of malleability. It isn't like mm. an end goal tick box, you know. And I think as well with diet, I just, I feel like we confuse ourselves so much because there's so much noise out there about what is the perfect diet for health. Like, how should I be eating? Should Sugar I be, paleo. yeah, should it be paleo? Should it be Mediterranean? Is it vegan? Is it vegetarian? Is it keto? Is keto? Is it carnivore? Like, what is the dietary answer? And I think the reason that there's so much noise in conversation is that no matter how many studies we have out there on these things, we can't get to a conclusion because maybe that's not the place to look. Like, instead of focusing so hard on, like, what's the exact type of diet, like, I really think the first step with diets that we need to be looking at in this day and age is actually just getting back to real food. And I know that, like, that's probably the most annoying thing that, like, I could say because... Sometimes it's just like, oh, you know, just want to eat real whole food. But like, I really mean that in an expansive way, you mm. know, like it doesn't have to be like eat real whole food in that, you know, you're making salads from scratch and smoothies all of the time and never have any, you know, treats or whatever. Like, actually, if all you did was instead of buying convenience, packaged, processed food with loads of ingredients, if instead you just made food, but it doesn't even have to be like crazy healthy salads and things, like why not just eat exactly the food you're eating now, but the homemade whole food version. So like make, if you buy like a ready-made shepherd's pie, or I think it's cottage pie in the UK, make that from scratch or if you love pizza you know make that with like more whole ingredients and it doesn't even have to be from scratch but maybe mm. buy a, ver a more convenient version that has ingredients that you can read like if you if you love like sweets and sugar and biscuits just like start baking like get good quality flour sugar eggs whatever and just bake and like still have your treats and bake. And obviously there's stages. So there will come a point where you have to look at your overall sugar consumption and, you know, certain like refined grains and things. That's that's to me the next level. But for most people, we need to be talking about the foundational piece. Mm. And that really needs to be just get back to actual food because so much of what we're eating right now is just chemicals. Mm. It's just chemicals. And I don't care what you say. You would be better off eating cake every week 
if it's made from scratch or eating bread every day if it's made from scratch. Let's stop demonizing certain foods because you're distracting us. Mm. You're distracting us away from feeling better. And I'm not okay with that. Me neither. Um, I think this is a really important discussion. I think, you know, if anyone, let us know what you think of diet and nutrition as the, as the point of it. Mm. I'm really intrigued to see, because so many people like, as they're starting to follow us and see what we're, what we're talking about, they're, you know, resonating with it. And we're getting some really, really kind and lovely messages. And we're getting the other side. We're getting some harsh messages, which people don't dis- disagree. And, you know, they, you are welcome. This is a place of candid conversation. We don't mind. It. It's not disagreement. We agree with, we list like to learn and listen and grow with everyone else. So I think, let us know what you think about this topic because I'd be really intrigued to find out what worked for you because mm. I think there's so much more to diet than we've realized because even things like paleo and going to that carnivore diet, I have one question for them. Let's test your uric acid levels. Let's look at your ammonia levels because that's mm. a whole another conversation and i guarantee you if we tested those they would be off the charts and if you want give that a google and let me know what you think of it but yeah appre- like really appreciate this you know conversation i think this is really this is a start of something yeah and like share your shall you share your wellness pillars below like share what you found really makes a difference for you and that could be as simple as you know have you started taking a cup of water in the morning with salt maybe or you know what's one or two habits that you changed that you felt really made an impact on your health because I think the more we can share our experiences and the reality of what made a difference, the more we can start getting to the conversations that will actually move the needle for us. The real image of where like that person, that influence actually really sat there underneath a blanket, absolutely exhausted after a long day of filming and recharging the batteries because there's no such thing as the Energizer Buzzy, but Bunny, sorry. Yeah, no but also a... like, it, like there's things in life that are just fun and... Yeah. There needs to be space for a glass of wine or to have some chocolate or, you know, to go traveling and eat some baklava or, (laughs) you know, and not kind of worry about it or feel like it's going to be the end of you or your breakdown or, you know, to feel like it's not okay. There needs to be more breathing room and more fun in this space because otherwise we're just turning people off from the idea of feeling well at all. It's just like, oh, that's not something that's for me. So let me stay away. Like, no, this is not an exclusionary place. This is a place that we want to bring as many people into as possible because people deserve to feel well and we deserve to also have fun and you know just relax sometimes and welcome yeah. to the candid conversation community <laughs> 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 welcome to our community yeah. um, thanks everyone cool. this has been a really, really fun one i think and i am looking forward to more and more of these conversations yeah. this will be so much fun <laughs> thanks guys